Hey everybody, welcome to Raising Vibrations and you're with Simon today. And um, this is a full moon forecast and uh, just general oversight on what I feel is important to recognize with this uh, full moon that's taking place. And um, some of my insights about what I feel you can use to embody the evolutionary potential of uh, this full moon. So the full moon is happening on today or yeah today which is the 21st of may 2016 and uh, that will be in sagittarius and it will be conjunct mars so mars and the moon will be conjunct each other in sagittarius at two degrees and uh, the sun will be at two degrees gemini making the opposition of course um What's really, really significant about, of course, the full moon experience is that it is a cycle within, or it's an energetic vibration within an original conjunction that took place when there was a new moon. So the full moon always resembles the nature of evolution regarding the, the new moon that took place, and that was uh, two weeks ago in uh, Taurus. So that new moon to me was a lot about like letting go of the fear that is present within us, okay? The fear that stops us from being more heart-centered in experiences. The fear that has been imprinted in you as a kid when you were, say for instance, uh, trying to accomplish something and the more adult world wasn't really understanding of your more childlike needs and you know you were maybe blown away or um, shunned or shouted at, etc. cetera. And that, that emotion still sticks with you within your psyche. And as you grow up, that subtleness that exists within your psyche plays a very important role in how you actually make decisions in life and how you, you go about working with your daily practice. So a lot of the new moon in Taurus was really getting into the, into the sort of deeper psychological fears of survival, my essential needs, and working with how can I clear out the fear so that I can hear the call of my spirit and that's what uh, today's new moon uh, full moon part of me represents it is the call to listen to the spirits it's the adventure that is on the outside or on the other side of fear that is preventing you from feeling what it feels like to know spirit to understand it to 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 embody it okay so what I invite you to do in this moment over here is maybe pause the video, for instance, or watch it over as many times as you can, and really reflect upon the nature of what you feel spirit is, and how do you embody that? What does your life look like when you are uh, anchoring in more of your, your conscious sense of self-identity into the, the body? And are you observing the nature of when you are maybe not wanting to make choices in your life that uh, are filled with... Um, psychological states of disempowerment, i.e. fear, not being good enough, any anything that is basically holding you back from actually embodying the experiences. Now, because of the nature of the full moon itself representing a very, very, very deep internal process, there is the nature of the moon, pardon me, not the moon, but, but Jupiter sitting on the north node in Virgo, okay? And Neptune is on the other side, and that is situ situating not really on the south node, but it's in Pisces. So we have this Virgo-Pisces axis, okay? And um, on the YouTube channel that I have, uh, there are uh, two videos specifically talking about the Virgo-Pisces axis. And they go into great depth regarding how that energy manifests from an emotional point of view. But I would say that in terms of where we are today... In regards to the Virgo Pisces transition that that took place when I'd recorded that video, we're in the thick of it. We're like right there in the deep end, really, really with our pitchforks and our sort of like um, cleaning up gear, and we're really getting to the bottom of the psyche regarding all these emotions that are embedded in feelings of lack, feelings of non self worth, feelings that you can't accomplish things, etc. Anything that stops you from being more um, awakened within yourself, that's there. A lot of judgments and imperfection. So as we have this interesting play, because of course the sun is conjunct Venus at this stage and Mars is conjunct the, the, the moon, we have also Mars and Venus opposing each other. And this is an interesting dynamic because 
The nature of Mars and Venus is, of course, our inner and outer relationship to ourselves. So when we are inwardly reflecting and expressing ourselves, it's coming from a place within our core sense of values and, and, and philosophy. Okay. And if those core values and philosophies have been crystallized through survival mechanisms, for instance, this is how you've dealt with pain in the past. You've survived pain by avoiding it in some way, shape or form, or putting up barriers and boundaries, protecting you from those ugly emotional experiences. Then what will naturally occur for you during this period of time is experiences and confrontations with others. Um, and of course, reflecting back to yourself where these situations and boundaries and, and limitations are no longer serving you anymore. We live now in a world where there is a lot of distortion regarding chaos. And yet fundamentally that chaos and distortion and sense of survivalism and sense of like, we're going to end, etc., is really just to stimulate the collective fear. Now I'm going to do a little bit of a segue over here and say that fear is naturally stored within what we call the limbic system. Okay. And what happens is, is that in the limbic system, there is a specific type of gland called the amygdala. Okay. And this amygdala is responsible for keeping us alive from the point of view that it is an interceptor. It says, this is a situation that we've been in before that didn't work out well for us. So when it's presented to us again, we're going to respond based on survival. Okay. A safety mechanism. So what it does is it sends messages to what is called the brainstem kicking in the fight or flight responses. Okay. And it goes even deeper into the story. And this is what I want to save with the next Virgo Pisces video is that as it goes deeper, as we, as this, this part of ourselves then gets triggered, the nervous system in the body then obviously sends out signals in accordance for response. So a lot of the time, the reason why you're actually trying to re discover yourself in a spiritual way. The reason why you want to open yourself up to more trusting and more uh, open states of consciousness that the new age perspective doesn't really understand what they're saying because they don't have the, the more grounded perspective in the process is that what you want to be doing is redirecting the way that the amygdala responds to the biology of your body so that when you are in situations, it's not actually a short circuiting. Okay. And what I mean by short circuiting is, is that in situations, it stops you from objectifying the reality saying, Hey, the last time this experience happened, the dynamics were different. And so now I'm in this experience again, I don't have to get defensive or warrior like and dig myself into the trenches and protect myself in this situation, right? Because we don't like the fear in order to break these psychological states, we need to really get into the, how the brain is being hardwired. And this takes a lot of work. And I, and I really, really do suggest that if you are into authentic work regarding your life and obviously changing your life in accordance with how things actually are, not some mental idea of, of what, uh, you know, abundance is and stuff like that, then you need to be working with how the body works as well. So I will be starting a series or helping us get in touch with that process. So I highly recommend researching stuff on, um, how the brain works, researching how the nervous system works. You know, these are really, really important things for you to get into yourself and to understand how that works so that you're not hijacked by these experiences. So coming back to the original point that I was trying to say, or not trying to say, but on where is that this full moon in itself with Mars and Venus will be triggering it in relationships. And you might feel limited and blocked in certain experiences or frustrated because the moon of course is hitting um, Mars. So not only is our bodily fluids and the energetic tides high at this point in time, Mars is activating its very impulsive behavior. So naturally you're going to feel very sort of on edge with regards to things. The best response to these situations is to actually get in touch with your body and say, you know, I'm, I'm recognizing that I'm full of like energetic vibration at this stage. I recognize that the energy at this point in time is, is helping me clear out stuff and that I can stay grounded in my responses. And this will actually help you navigate over the next three days. And I highly recommend doing this type of stuff. Um, so relationships will naturally be creating uh, issues. Now, the purpose when you work with oppositions in astrology is specifically to understand that there is essentially no opposition. 
it's all one. It's just that the third dimension creates the duality in order for you to observe the nature of what is being reflected back to you through your own story. In other words, when you see oppositions in your own personal natal charts, and of course, within your own, uh, within this kind of Mars Venus here, you're looking at how to unify the experience. What is the other person reflecting back to me? And as you do that, you can get deeper into the nature of your psyche regarding the distortions or collective fear or where you're being defensive, etc. And then you can kick in with the Saturn square, the nodal axis. So Saturn in Sagittarius, 14 degrees retrograde is squaring the nodes in Virgo Pisces. And of course, this is where the purification is happening. So I spoke about this in the new, in the, the chart of the day about two days ago, where I said there's this collective seesaw experience happening where it's Virgo, then it's Pisces, and it's Virgo, and it's Pisces, and it can be very difficult to, to get in touch with this process. So the point here regarding how the seesaw is working is that if you actually had to get onto a seesaw itself, imagine the feeling of trying to ground yourself when you're going up into the experience. The, the ecstasy of the Pisces energy is like rushing you to the top, and you're seeing spirit, and you're feeling it, and it's clarity. But then whatever comes up or whatever goes up must come down. So naturally, the process of coming back down to the grounded Virgo aspect is how we respond to our reality through the practical means of adjusting our life's purpose. In other words, getting in touch with the real soul work that is present for us. So we get the elation, we get the higher ecstasy, we get it motivated by the experience, but then we anchor it into the third dimension, which... 90% of the collective that has bought into new age movement stuff and, um, you know, this type of thing will struggle with. And honestly, it's probably a very, very bad thing to, to feel into consistent states of higher dimensional awarenesses, because when you do actually, when the emotions come back to the surface and your reality hasn't changed because you yourself haven't embodied the truth of the new direction, then depression will set in because it's like, nothing's working. I can't get out of this hell hole. So again, with the seesaw, as you come back down again, you're embodying these new changes. And this is what is essential to this new moon, or this the new moon and the full moon. And, and, you know, what's really, really important to recognize here is, is that Mars will be transiting back into Scorpio. We also have the sun in Gemini at this point in time and now moving into Gemini, which means it's going to be opposing Saturn. It's going to be squaring Jupiter. It's going to be squaring the, the nodal axis, it's going to be squaring at some point Chiron. It's going to be squaring Neptune. So it's creating this mutable cross. Okay. When we work with mutable cross energy, we're looking at instinctual change, uh, not instinctual change, but mutability. So things are mutating themselves. So when we look at metamorphosis, and in particular, the, the caterpillar turning into the butterfly, mutability would be the change of form from caterpillar into pure um, state. So where it is actually in its uh, liquid form so that it can be then merged into the butterfly. Does everybody understand that process of metamorphosis with the, the caterpillar turning into the butterfly? It must dissolve its form in order for it to regrow it or recrystallize it into its next form. So... We have been doing the, the dissolving process and at a, we are at a point now from a Earth's perspective in terms of her own consciousness evolving, because that's why we're here, we're helping that evolution manifest itself. As we, as we dissolve ourselves and our, own, our old ways of doing things, we naturally then prepare ourselves for recrystallization of new. And that's where we are. We're in that critical new crystallization process. So... It's natural for us to feel at this point in time incredibly to be scared as new directions are taking place. And we are needing to find more, more crystallization in ourselves. But the crystallization only comes through the embodiment of these new directions. Okay. So the mutability here is mutating us from the one, from the form that we had into the new form. And that mutability can, can, you know, can be chaotic at times, of course, because there is no essential direction. It's changing so fast. So the Earth trine kicks in here with Mercury being in, in Taurus, Pluto being in Capricorn, Jupiter being in Virgo, to create the stillness, to be still with the experience and to feel the vibration as it shifts through you instead of just impulsively moving on to the experience, but feel into it at that stage allow the body to breathe in this experience 
because the deeper you breathe into the experience, the more you're going to get out of it. So the more insight, the more depth, the more groundedness you're going to find in the experience. Okay. So, right guys, that was the uh, full moon uh, report for you. I, there was lots of information in there to digest. I really hope that you uh, were able to keep track on it. Um, some announcements I'd like to, to put across to everybody. There's a beginner's course astrology that I'm hosting at this stage and that is on my website. Please contact me through email, which um, is on my website. Okay. And um, just, you know, say to me, hey, you're interested in, in a beginner's course astrology. I'm gathering up some people for this class. When I do beginner's course astrology, I teach it from the point of view that not only are you going to become an astrologer yourself or have the intention to become that, but you can actually use this in, in, in a way that it's professional. So it's a very dedicated and serious study work. And we do a lot of chart practice. And most of my students that have actually gone through this experience have come out the other side in positions where they do a lot of the, the work on other people and spreading the message because that's the purpose. So that's um, what I'm doing here. So if you're interested in that experience, um, all the information is on my website. Okay. That is raisingvibrationsastrology.com. The link is in the description below. Look at um, uh, the schools. You'll see it's a tab. Look at the beginner's course astrology. I'm open to payment plans. If you are in a situation where you don't have the funds available completely, um, I'm open to payment plans as well because my main purpose here is to actually disseminate the information into the collective field, okay? Um, while teaching self-sustainability, which is, of course, the whole purpose of the ex exercise. So that's there. Um, and I don't really know if there's going to be a webinar for this full moon. I would say to you that there's a high, high probability that that's the case. Um, if it is the case, I will be posting it on uh, the newsletter, and I will be also putting it in the description below. Okay. And, um, yeah. All right, everyone. Thanks so much for supporting this channel. I truly appreciate it. If you like this, please hit the like and subscribe button, share the information as much as possible and, uh, have a fantastic weekend. Okay. Take care.